think about the last time you got into a rental car. Maybe that was for vacation or for business, but just take a few moments to remember what that was like. Maybe your experience was a bit unexpected. Maybe the gauges on the dashboard weren't super clear, or uh, maybe the knobs didn't operate how you expected them to. I don't know how many times I've thought I was using a turn signal and I ended up flipping the windshield wipers on full speed. <laughs> super embarrassing. Or maybe you're driving on the complete opposite side of the road than you're used to because you're in a different country. All of this can make for a really stressful way to kick off your trip. But on the other hand, your experience may have been the complete opposite. Maybe the car had cozy seat warmers, or the seat backs gave you a massage. Or maybe there were backup cameras that gave you that extra peace of mind that you were driving safely. You might even call that a delightful experience. So UX is off, user experience is often confused with the user interface, the UI. It's similar to the bells and whistles on a dashboard. Some people think that user experience is the front end of your cloud solution. But UX is actually much more than that. It's a combination of that UI design, the cloud technology or technology that it's built upon, and people's attitudes and behaviors when they're using it. UX determines how frustrated someone may feel with your app, but also how happy they are. Thinking about UX early on in your app development really gives your customers a seat at the table. As a UX researcher, I have often seen teams end up a bit short-sighted with their UX culture. You might spend a lot of time up front brainstorming ideas, understanding product market fit, and then you go off and develop the solution. And you wait until you're pretty much baked, have a pretty baked solution to get that in front of customers. So this doesn't actually allow much time for course correction. Especially if you're on a tight deadline, like who hasn't been given a deadline of yesterday or ASAP? <laughs> the great thing is you can actually start to integrate user feedback at any point of your development life cycle. And by doing this early and often, you move from that reactive mode of hearing from your users to really building an experience that fits your user needs early on. So I led UX research for Cloud Console's mobile app. And when we first com considered a, a mobile app for a Google Cloud platform, we thought, is this really the right thing to do? What problems or what needs would we actually be solving for with a mobile app for an entire cloud platform? We shouldn't just be building an app to build an app. And something else we considered was, what mobile app features do we need that would actually be different than when you're sitting in front of your desktop computer? You probably don't need all of those bells and whistles on your phone. So for the first version of our app, we started really small and we focused on just two use cases. The first allowed users to just monitor what was going on with their app when they were on the go. And the second allowed you to take action on really critical issues for your cloud resources. By starting small, we made sure we could laser focus on the UX for just these two use cases and get them right. So early on, our ideas were just sketches on a whiteboard, and we figured out if they resonated with our customers by just listening to them and watching them work. We iterated on our ideas in really low fidelity prototypes. Using low fidelity prototypes and showing those to customers allowed them to ideate along with us instead of focusing on the UI. The thing about putting something high fidelity in front of users when it's a really early idea is they focus on the bells and whistles. The feedback might be about the color of the buttons or where the checkboxes are. But the feedback you're looking for at that point in early ideation is really, does this actually solve a need? 
am I actually going to use this? So this is why we start simple and we start with low fidelity. So after we iterated on our designs and our prototypes, we put them in front of people in a much higher fidelity so that that's where we could see when are they actually using this app? Can they actually complete these use cases that we're focusing on? So a couple UX culture questions I like to ask myself along the way are, one, when during our development life cycle did we actually spend time with users? And the second question I ask is, when did stakeholders watch people using our app? So when I say stakeholders, I mean people who are heavily invested in your solution, also people who have a big say in the way your app looks and feels, people like compliance or legal. And if the answer to this is pretty limited, then you might need a shift in your UX culture. So I'm not saying you have to stop everything you're doing and focus on UX. Deadlines are imminent, and culture change takes a really long time. But I would recommend starting small. Can you spend 30 minutes next week watching your users? Can you spend 30 minutes in the next month asking them questions and just listening to them? This is a really good way to start. OK, so in addition to a solid infrastructure, you need your app needs to be scalable, reliable, all of that. Usability is also necessary for a, a, a solid user experience. And when I say solid user experience, I mean if I give this app to you and just give you a task to do without telling you what to do, you got to be able to do it. If you can't do it, if you can't complete it, consider that a failure. So fortunately, there are so many great UX cloud-based tools out there that allow your whole team to collaborate and ideate early. Two of the tools that my team uses are Figma and Envision. And it's really great because you can start off early. Your designers, your developers, product, anyone on your team can collaborate on a prototype, drop in feedback, and you can push that out to your customers really fast. It actually increases the velocity and productivity of your whole team. So once you have your infrastructure down, you've got your usability down, another thing to consider is how you might surprise and delight your customers. In the next panel, um, a bunch of women will tell you about the latest trends in cloud technology. One area to consider is machine learning. What's really great about cloud providers today is they make ML much more scalable and accessible, even if you're not very ML savvy. You could use things like prediction. For example, music apps out there today use this to suggest new songs to you. Or creation and detection. Photos apps will sort your photos for you and even create videos and albums. These are just a couple examples of ways that cloud technology can uplevel your UX. So building for UX is one of my passions. I hope I've inspired you to consider your users early and often. And the next time that they get into your rental car, I hope you're confident that they're having a great UX.